All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled meeting for August 21st, 2023, 6 p.m. Good evening, audience. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, <clears throat> administrators and council, good evening. Uh, Ms. Burner, if you would call roll, please. Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Rodewald. Here. Seven members present. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Trustee. <laughs> So many favors. We thank you for this meeting and thank you for our citizens. Lord, please guide this meeting. Let thy perfect will be done. Please protect our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Right. Why don't we just see the flag? Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Council, and members of the public here tonight. My exciting finance report. I always try to. I can't do it. So, okay. You're off to a good start. Started off strong. I'm trying to come up with something. You know, to get you in there. But for the month of July, that's the month that we're reporting. We did receive eight hundred fifty-seven thousand forty-nine dollars and two cents. For the month of July, we spent $599,886.88, and that brings our ending balance uh, $6,991,459.75. All the bank's accounts are reconciled. On the income tax report from our tax administrator for July, we had collected $199,114.62. And that is uh, $12,782 more than this time last year. We're running about a little over 10% of our collections versus last year. I did put a pool revenue report in. It's only up through the month of July. So up to date for this year, we've collected $85,335.05 for our pool. And we've spent $78,017.34. And we'll have one more month to report on next month. On the mayor's court, they receded in between fines and court costs $3,754 for a total year to date of $31,613. And that is my reports. I have some other details and I can entertain any questions. Well, I was on the edge of my chair. Did you have a question? No. All right. <laughs> Mr. Herbert. Um, on the monthly income tax collection, is that right for the state that we received seventy-three thousand nine hundred and eighty-seven dollars for uh, for June? For state June. only pays us quarterly, so for the state, seventy-four thousand for the uh, year to date, and for CCA for the income tax, we collected one million two hundred ninety-six thousand three hundred seventy-four. Just, I mean, compared to last year, that's just a huge sum difference. We got a really big hit in June, and that's the, um, I don't have all the detail, but it's the municipal okay. income tax portion of their collection. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Riddle. Anyone else? I just have one, Ms. Paris. Do you have a, um, I know that I think Mr. Bridge has touched on it a couple times over the, the course of this year, but do you have a projection of where our, our general fund's going to end at the end of this year, where we're going to be setting the ballpark? At the end of this year, I could. And I know that's a real we're... big question. I mean, do you have a ballpark idea of where? We're, I mean, we're going to be higher than what we were, I'm assuming, in the past. If you give me a minute, I can come back to it. I can pull a report because we have our estimated working budget kind of drafted, and that'll give me an idea. Okay. But we're, we're six months can change a lot one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but... if you don't want to mess with it, I get it. That's a, uh, like I said, that was a loaded question. Okay. I'm just so I'll, I'll look at it while they're doing the other reports, and if you'd like, I can give you a little. Okay. Right. Move to accept the financial report. Second. <clears throat> Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Lindsay. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Graham? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. So Councilman so. Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. <laughs> accept at 7 0. Move to accept Mayor Court report. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston for the mayor's report. All right. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Also accepted. 7 0. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Rich. Thank you. Uh, moving on with the city manager report, our assistant city manager, Howard Kiko, with the service report. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, uh, members of council, members of the public, good evening. I will start off with, um, and I'm still waiting on a phone call back on trying to readjust that light over the parking lot outside the shelter house here. Uh, street sweeper proposals. So uh, Colleen and I did discuss some finance rate structures that we did get. Uh, one of the vendors we have to get some clarification because basically it boils down to, is it a three year in the rears or is it a one year down and two years in the rear? So we're trying to get some clarification on uh, rates because they were pretty favorable by what this uh, company had gave us. So uh, once we get that dialed in and we'll have an ordinance uh, drafted for council to uh, request purchase of that sweeper. And then of course it's on the CIP. So 
it, it's all depending on, as well on approval of that. Uh, water department, I did get an update on our private well inspections. We're up to about 70. I think we have about 20 to go in the city on the private. Uh, we did find one uh, property that did, uh, they were not connected to the house on the inside, but we did have an inspection where a pressure tank um, from a well was inside a basement. So um, we're working on drafting them a letter and uh, where they'll have to remove that off their, it has to be taken out of the house. They can still keep the well, they can move it into a garage, whatever, just can't be on the principal, but we did find one in the city. Um, again, they're still working on general player repairs at the plant. Um, we did get hydrants replaced, however, this weekend we did have another one hit at Scott and Prentice. So one of the ones we were gonna do, we're gonna move it over to here because it's completely out of service, but well, actually gone. So we're gonna get that repaired. Uh, really no updates on the clarifiers other than they did get delivered. Uh, we have a little less than six months to work with the contractor on scheduling. Um, it could be close to winter time when they make it. They just happen to come in early as far as delivery. Uh, Clark County resurfacing project, Falcon Drive did get complete. Uh, completed. The only thing not done is the manholes. I went and marked those last week. So they'll come in with Mr. Manhole, cut them out, and I'm sure you've seen somewhere, you see the new asphalt and you'll see a little concrete ring done. They'll be doing a few of those uh, as well. I think we budgeted for 10 manholes to be done, we only got to do three. So when they paid, they did a really good job at matching uh, current grade. Uh, Main Street Curb and ADA ramp project uh, that was awarded to A and B, a &B Asphalt is complete. Uh, so all those ADA ramps, including what the city did for detect, uh, detectable warning strips, the curb and some of the other uh, things that are out there is complete. With that being said, it still is tentative for September 18th to be uh, paving State Route 235 as of right now. So once you start seeing signs come in um, for road work, then we know it's probably going to be soon. Uh, we're, it's Fenwick Drive reconstruction phase two just got word that certain construction will begin the 300 block of Fenwick uh, just after Labor Day. I already did call the uh, bus garage at Tecumseh and a few other folks just kind of let them know that it's coming up. I already did hand deliver a resident letter out to each home, talk with a few, let them know kind of what, what's going on and they've been aware of the other projects we've done so they kind of know um, ahead. Uh, Carlisle Park phase one project that is currently um, being, uh, the engineering is finished up, the county right now is, I think they got it advertised and out for bids. We, I just got to get an update on when we think we'll be starting that project. And then on to the Nature Works uh, grant. So when we had made that decision um, to switch from gazebos to the liner, I had put requests in as well to another company that does uh, major pool uh, work, commercial companies. And uh, he had gotten back with me on uh, some items that had concerns with this liner. Um, one part was uh, once we put this in, obviously I'd stated before we have the potential, because we're in groundwater, we have potential for floating of that liner. Uh, number two, we're working on some items that are from the 50s that we need to upgrade, as if you put the liner in, that's a 10 year project. So we want to do other things that will keep us around for the 10 years. Um, he come in with a budget price to redo the main drain that's down there, upgrade it from a four inch to an eight inch, or six or eight, and, a few, and some other pumping items, redo the piping, um, redo the bottom of the pool before we put this liner in, and he just said, here, use a budget number of about 175,000 to do these additional items that if you put that liner in, you're gonna wanna, you really need to do. <coughs> so with that being said, there's a, there's a little bit of additional info that um, took a while to get, but it's here now. Um, I can entertain any questions on the report, anything outside the report, or anything that has been ongoing that I didn't cover. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Council, any questions for Mr. Kitko, Mr. Vice Mayor? I had a resident approach me. She said that we had talked about uh, transforming the some of the tennis courts to pickleball courts. Mm -hmm. She was wondering what the progress on that was. If we, there's any. We, I got to look back in the parks budget uh, uh, to double check CIP, but we had gotten a price of almost, I think it was $9,000 to re, um, <coughs> restrike from uh, tennis 
to pickle. Okay. So I took, I'm trying to figure out another way to maybe not make $9,000 for restriping. And can we add some striping and still play on the tennis court? So I think it's nets, it's, it's striping, but it, I thought that was kind of outrageous to convert. Yeah. Okay, thank you. But that is definitely in the works. And honestly, there might be more, um, because I'm hearing some more municipalities doing this and actually starting leagues and they're generating what, revenue from tournaments and things like that. So it, it, it's hot for sure. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, anyone else? Mr. Um, can you remind me what was the Nature Works grant? What was the total for the pool that we were moving over? It was originally a request for 60,000 with $40,000 being reimbursable for the grant. So it's 40,000 regardless if it's a 60 or a million dollar project. Okay. So really we get $40,000 in grant funds. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nick. <clears throat> the uh, liner, if I remember correctly, isn't, wasn't it around $100,000, $110,000 for the liner? We, I think we have set aside close to 125. 125? Mm -hmm. And then another 175 in repairs before the liner goes in? It's very possible. Uh, so right now we, we've been uh, approved uh, with our pump, current pumping capacities. And when, when it first made the decision to do the liner, because um, you can do uh, possibly a change out of main drains anytime until a liner goes in and then you can't, re you can't redo the bottom. So once that decision was made, I looked into what else do we need to do with this liner? And yeah, one of them's getting the main drain. Supposedly new code, you, you have to be able to, um, the pump should be able to turn over the whole pole from the main drain by itself. So these are some uh, things that came up from this guy who uh, shot me the email. I think it was like right before the last council meeting. So on some additional information. So based on those figures, we'll look at Two three hundred thousand dollars, another two hundred thousand dollars to, or one hundred seventy-five thousand to fix this. On a on an old pool. So I'm going to interject here because when that was come up, it was the recommendation of the city manager to go ahead with the gazebos because of the uh, the uh, useful life of the pool. So council is going to have to make a decision relatively quick once we get to the final numbers, how you guys want to move forward because I don't, be council's decision, but I would never recommend putting the additional 175, whatever that cost may be, into that pool um, without the guarantee of it, it's going to last. So with the added cost, we're going to have to know how you guys want to move forward because if there's a chance to rewrite the grant to put the gazebos back in potentially, that hopefully could still be an option. But we need to get you guys final solid information soon so you guys can decide how you want to move forward with that line. I don't think it'd be a good use of taxpayer money to spend another $175,000 to <clears throat> fix a pool that still may only last 10 years. That's a lot of money for, <clears throat> for what we got. But a lot of people use this pool. I assume I haven't been over there. <laughs> no, they be uh, probably full, probably full in these hot days. So you go into full design? You uh, no. No specific Thank you, sir. That's a pretty good number. Good. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, for the um, the liner, so we're, we're putting the grant money towards it, plus we put back over the past couple of years, how much money for it? 80. 60? 80. 80. This year was 40, last year was 40. Okay. So. So the liner's paid for. So the liner's paid for. So we're looking at an, an addition, potential additional 175. Uh, I won't say a total of, I mean, it is a total of, you know, 400,000 or so. Um, okay. When do you need an answer on that, Mr. Kitko? Um, well, the grant has to be completed, and I will double check this, um, and I will let Mr. Bridge know. It's, it's in, the, in the agreement. I believe December of 24, all funds have to be reimbursed, mm -hmm. and the job has to be done by then. Um, it's either December of 20, yeah, it's December of 24 because we applied in early 23. No, I don't say. Does that include upgrades to like the pumps and filters and stuff in the back? So this would this would be repiping all new main drain, main drain covers, um, cutting out the whole concrete, and then trying to figure out how we would dewater it. Our problems being in. in Again, trying to get a commercial builder 
how to give you his, his knowledge without cost. And of course, I will not bring it, the company up. I won't you know, say anything like that. Um, and give us a straight up answer. One, he said, liner's a bad idea. You're in a water table. If you were to cut the deep end out and raise that concrete up, no issues whatsoever. He understands that the liner, and I've mentioned this to you guys, that there are um, valves that water can come through the concrete and can get into the liner. It's made to take that negative pressure off and be able to come in. However, if you have to empty the deep end out to do any major cleaning, I mean, I, I, I've never cleaned a pool or taken a pool completely down with a liner on a concrete surface. We've never done that. He just said it's not a good idea. You need to probably put a well uh, within the vicinity of the area. You pump the groundwater out of the area so when you drain it, you don't have any negative pressure on it. Do your work, start refilling the pool, and then you can shut the well off. Um, that's, that's his one concern. The part that's 175 is getting the bottom redone with the main drain, the piping, getting the chlorine working, because it's all been designed, I think, back in a, a gentleman who had uh, sent it off to ODH before. Now we're finding out it's undersized. The pit that was put in in 1999 with the pool upgrade, all the stainless, that pit doesn't even meet today's standards. He said that thing needs to be another like eight to 10 feet deep. He said that's why when, when I, we're down there and we turn it all the way on and it, suck, it will suck it dry, it's not supposed to do that. He said that would put a new pit in and then the pumping. The only thing it does not include, and I said we can, we, we're okay with this, is the baby pool needs to be on its own service because anytime we chlorinate, it can, the baby pool kind of gets a shock first, then it goes into the big pool. So we can actually get two different readings from the pools even though they're on the same system. But that's not a, that's not a requirement. We can work around that. Um, I want to say, I forget what he, I'd have to go back and look at the email on the additional cost for that, but that was not needed for the liner. Okay. Um, you may not know the answer to this, but I figured I'd ask. How, how, uh, how far would we have to take that deep end up? Because right now it's what, 12 feet? It's 12 feet and usually the water table, I don't know if you've ever been down here, it sits at about seven feet, about year round, seven, eight feet. That's where that deep end sits. So wherever the creek level is, that's where it sits in our deep. Um, so it would have to be brought up about eight feet. And, and how deep does the pool have to be that still have the diving board? Oh, so the diving board, that's even changed. We're very close on the diving board. And the reason we are, it's not so much depth, it's the wall, so when you jump off, it's that slope wall going to the shallow. It's, it's like right on the verge. So it, it needs to be farther away. So, but shallow, you bring it up uh, two inches, and we can't have the diving board. We're right at code for the diving board. That, the reason that um, the high dive, or whatever they call it, the three meter board, mm -hmm. is gone, is they require 14 feet yeah. of water depth. Yeah, I knew that one. I just didn't know what uh, put that. The high dive was terrifying when I was little. Things fantastic. Shark. <laughs> what about um actually never mind. I can ask that question. So yeah, that's all I have. That's all I got. Anything else? All right. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Appreciate it. <clears throat> And back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Kiko. Moving on to city management report. Uh, under informational items, we have joint government meeting 628, 630 is start time. Uh, dinner starts at 6 p.m. That is at Tecumseh High School. Uh, we have Red Tree Investments. So we had an ordinance not too long ago with council. You guys approved that for us to start investing with Red Tree Investments. That has been executed. Uh, so we are currently investing with them. I think we currently have about a million dollars in with them. Um, they're performing so far very well. Um, well, we don't know that yet. Colleen's really probably early, but all indications is they are going to perform very well. So we're excited to further diversify our portfolio. Um, 2022 and early 2023 code update is underway. We are waiting for a quote on that. Once we get that quote, we'll execute that contract. What's that going to do is update all our codes online. Uh, I think the last time they're updated, it was 2021. So all the legislation passed uh, since then will be updated online. Um, we have upcoming legislation. We have liability insurance removal. Um, the noted annexation was done last council meeting. So that needs to be struck out of your city manager report. And then we have the donation bin ban. I was talking to Jake about that this morning. He is drafting that. That is gonna be drafted for all out ban. Um, 
there is a, a way that we can have them and regulate them. Um, we are not recommending to that because it's just going to be the same old, same old thing that we have now. So should council want to pass that, we are looking to introduce that uh, at the next meeting. Um, I do believe that is all I have for the city manager report. Uh, staff, anything else you want to add to uh, Ms. Harris? I can answer a projection. Cool. It, we got a little ways to go. So um, <coughs> the books are saying about 1.7 million on our ending. Okay. But I'm projecting it to be about 1.9. For the general fund? For the general fund. Okay. That's is that, what I looked at. If that's what it ends up, and I know it's a projection, that's up from year past, correct? Last year was 2.3. Was it? Okay. So it's a little less. But that was a really good year. But we have a lot of capital. We have a lot of other projects in this current budget. So we uh, okay. I don't expect it to be quite as high. Okay. Thank you very much. You're Appreciate welcome. it. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Yep. Anything else? Moving on. Right. Council, anything for Mr. Bridge before we move on? All right. Moving on. <clears throat> uh, comments from the public. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, any of the above, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address and try to keep it in <clears throat> five minutes, please. I'm going to keep your time. I even noticed. I'm not going to take Oh, please, uh, please have at it. <laughs> Ronald Cobb, 202 Bill Drive. With your permission, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to address something to the city manager. You, yes, you can address it. Mr. Bridge, yes, is sir. it possible to, on the waste contract to add a surcharge so we can start building up our funds to fix these streets? That would be a council decision. That would have been in the bid specs if they wanted to do that. So unfortunately for this cycle, it'll be tough to do, but if that's something they want to bring back at the next, and that's called a franchise fee. I, I, yeah. I mean, when we had it, we had money in there that we could stay ahead and fix our streets when the, we had it before. Yeah, there was a franchise fee before. That was before I was a uh, city manager. And then I think we moved it because it wasn't being used properly. Um, and then what that does is it actually makes it more expensive onto your user because they just build that fee into your charge. So like sometimes how that works is we'll get a, a dollar or two per customer and they'll just pass it on to you. And then we'll get it in the form of uh, money to help do ro road repairs. Um, but again, that is something when we do develop that bid package, council should have uh, uh, directed it then. I mean, I just thought I'd try. Yeah, for sure, for sure. They do work, for Thank sure. Thank you. Yeah, I think we even discussed it, did we, prior to sending this one out? Yeah, franchise fee. Yeah, yeah. the franchise fee, and mm -hmm. I, don't think, I don't think there was much interest in it at the time. Mm -mm. So, but yeah. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Anyone else? All right, moving on to resolutions. Ms. Berner, if you would, please. <coughs> Yeah. All right. We have resolution 2023-15R introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 9-5-23. A resolution adopting the 2024 to 2028 capital improvement program for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Moving on to ordinances. I have ordinance 2023-44. This was introduced on August 7th, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance determining to proceed with the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio by lighting them. So, second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Lindsay. And an explanation of this ordinance. So anytime that we levy assessments for street lighting, there's a series of legislative uh, uh, pieces that we have to do. It always starts with a resolution of necessity the August 7th meeting council to approve that. Then we go on to a few other ones that give us the, the, uh, declaring the necessity and then actually putting it onto the tax bill. All that's is, uh, guided by the state of Ohio. So we got two legislations for this and this is the first of the two. Thank you. Council, any questions for Mr. Bridge? Are you ready, please? All right. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Vice Mayor. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That passes 7 0. We have Ordinance 2023 45. This was introduced on August 7th. Public hearing and action tonight. 
an ordinance levying assessments for the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. So moved. Explanation of this ordinance. This is actually the second of the third that we do for street lighting. And this actually, um, this one assesses. And discussion, council. When you're ready, Ms. Burns. Question, sir. Yes. Uh, they can still come to the city building after this passes and pay it prior yeah. to it going on their taxes, correct? Yeah, we'll put a legal ad out uh, dictating when they can come in and pay. Thank you. So I think Thank it's like a two or three week window. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That passes 7 0. All right. We have Ordinance 2023 46. This was introduced on August 7th. Public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement of the tax duplicate certain delinquent utility accounts for collection with real estate taxes. So moved. Mr. Lindsay and then Ms. Uh, the explanation of this ordinance, this is very similar to the street lighting uh, legislation, but this is for unpaid utility bills. Any discussion? When you're ready, please. <laughs> Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That passes 7 0. I have Ordinance 2023 47. This was introduced on August 7th, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected weed and or grass cutting fees for collection with real estate taxes. Second. Explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this uh, does the same thing as street lighting and utilities, but this is for high grass. So people who haven't cut their grass and we've had to cut it for them. Any discussion, council? Yes. Mr. Grimm, Vice Mayor. Mr. Bridge, what is our track record in collecting these funds? Uh, it's, we usually receive probably anywhere from maybe 9,000 to 15 uh, yearly in our assessment uh, general fund revenue. If you look Percentage. at that. Percentage? We don't know because we don't, like, when we get the money back, we don't know if it's from 2016, 2017, 2018. So I can't tell you in 2021 when we received 15,000 where that came from. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. We just get a lump sum. But we do have a good rate of return. And I will say this, this is one of the highest ones we've ever done since I employed here. I think this is over 20K worth of assessments going up to the auditor. So are people voluntarily paying it or is it? We usually see it assessed. Um, a lot of these are bank owned properties. So we'll, we'll take care of that property all year. Um, then we'll send that up to the county auditor. You see those kind of properties not get paid. It has kind of get rolled over. Um, if it's not bank owned, you'll have people come in and pay. We probably average anywhere, what, two to three a year, Colleen, if At that, that they come in and pay in person when they get them. Uh, but 90% of the time, they just get rolled over to taxes. Am I correct? I remember correctly, you said if it goes to a sheriff sale, we get nothing. That is correct. So in the state of Ohio, um, for example, there's a house, so, oh, there's quite a few houses in Ross and in various parts of the city that we've maintained all year. And that this bill, uh, for example, could be in one property. Um, let me get a high one here. So we got one for $2,461, it's 219 Rawson Drive. So let's say that goes to sheriff's sale because it's on sheriff's sale for tax, tax, fast taxes. As soon as they buy that, they'll call and they'll say, all your liens have to be removed. So that's your grass liens. We don't have to remove the street lighting assessment, nor do we have to remove any water lien, any utility bill lien. But that grass assessment or any kind of nuisance abatement, it does have to be removed. So yes, we do lose some money on it, but we also get some accurate here as well. Okay, thank you. Very good questions. Mr. Vice Mayor, anyone else? Yes. Councilman Roadwell. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That's the seven zero. Ordinance twenty twenty three dash forty nine E. Introduction tonight. Public hearing and action tonight. And ordinance 
authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into an agreement with the Ohio Department of Development to accept grant funds for the city's lead service line removal and valve replacement project and declaring an emergency. So, in explanation of this ordinance, we will defer to our assistant city manager. Um, Howie, good, good job at getting this grant, sir. Yeah. Yep, thank you. Um, so this all started in 2021 when the Ohio Department of Development put out a request for ARPA funds administered by the state. Um, so that's how long it's been sitting in the pipeline. Uh, but we were awarded uh, $2,392,041 uh, to go towards lead service abatements. So if you live in the old section of town of Adams, Scott, uh, Clay, Church, or anywhere on Lincoln, um, Jackson or Washington all the way over to Madison you will probably see in the next year and a half or so getting water mains uh, replaced all your lead services replaced well they're mainly goosenecks for our town some places have more um, all the way up to your curb stop that's usually in your yard so <clears throat> excuse me that will all take place here in the next year and a half and this much was a grant and then the city's match to it was twenty thousand dollars for construction and I could say it was a hit, but uh, the city also has to pay for engineering, which is, a, is estimated to be 250000 So, But I'll take $2.4 million for a $250,000 investment to get the lead. The, that's the only lead we have in the system. Uh, we've not had any lead hits. Um, our water is good. We, we um, take care of that. But you know, we definitely don't want to end up like any other community. So we did get the funds. And that's what this ordinance does, is it accepts those grant funds. And then uh, immediately I'll sign the agreement tomorrow. I will do requests for qualifications for an engineer in, in the coming weeks. And then all of a sudden uh, you'll be seeing some digging. And with that being said, uh, probably once this is over, there's going to be a lot of, hopefully I can find more grants to redo the streets because you know what it's like with a ditch going down after being repaired. So I'll be working on the whole section to get it repaid after that. Thank you. Was um was there a lot of I mean was there a lot of people put in for that grant or a lot I forget how many millions we were round five of of this which is the last round um, I haven't seen the totals but it was it was way up there yeah. um, some got multiple some got one um, what was I'm, the total pot do you know I, I don't know it's been changing because uh, Governor uh, Dewine had sent uh, added an extension to it last year where he added more money. Um, so I heard that there's going to be possibly another house bill coming along that will authorize more water and wastewater infrastructure grant money coming. So, and this does not deter. This does not. Um, uh, th we still can apply. This doesn't say we can't apply because we got previous funds. Okay, great. Well, good job. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm I'm happy about this. That's a lot of money for a small community. Yeah, yeah great. definitely. Anyone else from yes. Mr. Kiko? Mr. I didn't hear you mention Main and Pike Streets. Uh, some of Pike does not have, actually uh, Main Street has copper uh, coming off the mains. We've uh, con have confirmed some of that and we have not found lead. We, we do have some more exploratory to do, but uh, we have so far not found lead on Pike. Okay, thank you. How old, are the, how old did you say the lead necks were? So they, they're about uh, about that long. No, I mean, oh. how, how long ago were they put in? Oh, in, in the um, 1930s, 30s. was when the water system came online because it was cast iron pipe and then lead goosenecks to galvanize water line. And they, they used lead because they can mold that around the galvanize and mold that around the corporation stop. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Mr. Kitka. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're ready, Ms. Burner. When you're ready. Okay. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodwell? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. That passes 7-0. Um, I'm going to ask that you break rules of council so we can add two ordinances onto the agenda this evening that are just read only, but I need you to break rules of council first. So <laughs> you got it. Mr. Okay. Cook? Second. Who was the second? Me. Okay. Would council like an explanation? Please. Um, so we got the bid results back for Rumkey and a Republic for the two responsive bidders to our tra trash contracts. 
So we want to go ahead and break rules of council. You have two ordinances in front of council. They'll be introduced read only. One is for Rumpy, one is for Republic. The bid tab sheets are attached to each one of those. I also had supplied council with an overview so you can kind of look at the price comparisons. We want to, we want to go ahead and get that on the agenda or uh, ASAP due to the start of the new contract, which is December 2nd. So we're basically buying ourselves about two, 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 two and a half weeks if we break rules of council and get them introduced. So we vote on them at the 9-5 meeting. Thank you. Any questions, Council? Ms. Berger, when you're ready. All right. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. That passes to <clears throat> zero. So our first one is Ordinance 2023 50, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on September 5th. An ordinance accepting a bid for an exclusive franchise for the curbside collection and disposal of residential garbage, refuse, and recyclables in the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. The next one is Ordinance 2023-51, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on September 5th. An ordinance accepting a bid for an exclusive franchise for the curbside collection and disposal of residential garbage, refuse, and recyclables in the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. <coughs> Thank you. Would you like me to read other business? Please. Other business. Tonight we have our city council public hearing in action for the zoning classification classification change for 336 Ohio and 610, 608, 606, 604 West Madison Street, Clark County Land Bank and Habitat Home Builds. Thank you. Uh, open for any um, other city business discussion. I had something I wanted to go over, but... Um, I did put an executive session on here tonight because uh, Mr. Kicker would call me. You got to uh, vote on that, what I just read. Do what? You have to vote on that, what I just read. To hear. So moved on the hearing. Oh, okay. I apologize. Can I, can I read this for the record? Yes. So this was issued to council at the first meeting in July, and it is the recommendation of the planning board, and that's how they got to do it. Planning board make a rec make, makes a recommendation to council. Or the wrong glasses, they forgive me. Uh, it says, Mr. Bridge, members of City Council, on May 16, 2023, the New Carlisle Planning Board had a public meeting at Smith Park Shelter House. The board reviewed the preliminary plot four plan for the reserves at Honey Creek. The board approved that plot plan and as presented with no modifications. This plot plan is sent to council for any changes you would like to make and approved by council. That is not why we're meeting, but I did want to read it for the record because it is part of the overall recommendation. The board then reviewed the site plan for Clark County Land Bank uh, Habitat Humanity Greater Dayton, 600 Madison Avenue. The site plan was approved and sent to council for your approval with any changes you'd like to make. The board then held discussion on zoning changes for 336 Ohio Street, New Carlisle, Ohio, and the four properties at 600 West Madison, which have now been subdivided into 604, 606, 606 608, and 610, changing from R2 to R7, I mean, I'm sorry, changing from R2 to I1, and the property is at 600 Madison from R2 to R7. This recommendation is sent to council for approval. So that was council is approving on tonight. Any time that we change any aspect of our planning and zoning code, it is quite the time driven process. We have to introduce it, it has to sit for X amount of days, then they have to vote, vote on it, then it has to become sit from X amount of days before it comes effective. So at the point of the process we're in tonight was I actually vote on those changes that was recommended by the planning board. So again, to read it for the record, 336 Ohio is uh, Best Corp. Mr. Cook is probably familiar with that site back there. It's the old, uh, where you used to work. Half of that parcel is zoned residential. The other half is zoned light industrial. It is a light industrial zone part of town. So we want to clean that up. Um, the Madison Street School, that was R2 for the longest time, but since the uh, housing came on, we had split the first, um, some frontage off of that for the four lots. So we need to change that. So planning board had voted on R7. That's very comparable to the uh, existing zoning that's over there and existing zoning that's already in our city. So this would be the last step of approval. Council. So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Go ahead to go. Yep. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. That is accepted 7 0. 
and forgive me for interjecting one more time, but the, those who were able to make it because your schedule permitted to the groundbreaking ceremony for that family, it was a fantastic turnout. So for you elected officials who had the availability show up, we appreciate that. I heard it was a nice turnout. It was a great turnout. So the family was very, very impressed. Good. Yep. Glad to hear. And they seem like nice people too. Great people. I can't wait to volunteer for some sweat equity and help them build a house. It'll be a fun time. What are you going to do, watch? Supervise. <laughs> supervise. Supervise. That's what I yeah, do. They've got supervisors. They got all they need. Uh, I want to see him with a hammer. Uh, any other uh, city business? I just had one thing I want to go over. I wanted to thank, um, I believe, Mr. Lindsay, Mr. Cook, and I can't remember who else. I know when we were going over the trash discussion, you know, everybody kind of had their opinion on which way to go, open it up for bid, or to go with, with waste mm -hmm. management. I was one that thought we would be better off. Uh, sticking with waste management. Now, I'm not saying anything negative about waste management. They I always had good service with them, but I was truly shocked at the numbers when we when he sent them out today. So uh, for you two, and I can't remember if there was anyone else, but uh, thanks for pushing in that, in that direction. Yeah. It obviously turned out really well for us. Would you like me to read for the record? Please, that would be great. Rumkey came back with very aggressive rates. Um, I actually called Rumkey today and thanked them, and among some other things that we had to talk about too. Um, and I'll just, for fairness, I'll give both both bidders. We have Repub Republic and then Rocky bidded. Do you want to, are you going to give the current number too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we have three levels of service here in New Carlisle. We have a low volume, low volume, standard volume, and then a senior volume. So our low volume is a 64-gallon cart. Currently, we pay $18.26. That's just waste management. Uh, and um, first-year costs for Republic was 18.26, so no increase there. The first year cost with Rumkey was $16.11, which equates to a reduction of monthly service cost of $2.15. Year two, Republic goes up to $19.08. The year three, it goes up to $19.94. For Rumkey, it goes up year two, $16.92, which is $1.34 cheaper than what we're paying now. And then $17.76, which is 50, 50 cents less than what we're paying now. So those people on the 64 gallon should council choose Rumpke as the next hauler or actually see a reduction in their uh, trash costs over the next few years, which is unheard of. Standard, which is the 96 gallon, uh, the current monthly rate is $21.67. Republic, Republic year one came at no increase, $21.67. Rumpke came in at $17.97, which equates to a $3.70 monthly savings. That's amazing. Um, year two, Republic was $22.64. Year three, $23.65. Rumpke year two was $18.87, which is $2.80 cheaper than what they pay now. $19.81 to year three, which is $1.86 than what they pay now. So those uh, participants in the 96 gallon program should council go with Rumpke We'll also see a price decrease over the next three years. The senior rate, which is a 35 gallon bin and 55 age up to qualify for that. Um, it's right now $13.23. Republic came back at $13.53 for year one, which is a 30 cent increase. Compared to Rumpke came in at $12.35, which is a reduction of 88 cents. Republic year two is $14.14. .14. Year three, it goes up to $14.79. Rumpke year two goes up to $12.96, which is still 27 cents cheaper on a monthly rate. And then $13.62, which is a slight modest increase of what they're currently paying now of 39 cents. So for the service levels, those are drastic, drastic savings. It also goes down to if you want to rent an extra cart, um, I'll just breeze through these really quick. Rumpke across the board, no matter if it's a low volume, standard service, extra cart for recycling, it's $5. Um, and then the flip side of that, Re Republic is, has a sliding scale. Again, it doesn't matter if you have a low volume or standard trash for recycling. Year one is an extra $7.50 compared to Rumpke's five. Year two is $7.84 compared to Rumpke's five. Year three is $8.19 compared to Rumpke's five. And I'll just finish out with the last line item since we're here. So the other thing that we put in our bid specs is bulk items. So we wanted at least two free, um, so you get two up to two free a month. If you by chance want to throw one of your two as like a refrigerator or a freezer and there's the CFCs in it, 
for Republic, that's forty-two dollars and fifty cents to remove. And Republic did, I mean, Republic did come in higher with that. That was sixty dollars. But what I'm going to communicate with council is let's not put that to the equation too much because that's a, a need by need person. So if I need to throw a fridge away, it shouldn't impact someone else's rate. So I'm not mad at that, even though there is about an eighteen dollar difference between the two. It's just it's few and far between. So overall, this is my third bid. I have never once seen numbers come in like this um, as far as going down and reducing on such a such a good scale. So um, hats off to to uh, a great bid package and great people. And looks like we for those again, I was with for staying with waste management. And, uh, so thank you for voting that out because I don't think we I don't think uh, I don't think we clearly would have saved the residents' money like we're now. All right. Agreed. So, question. Sir. Uh, on this contract, Mr. Bridge, uh, does that include the city's uh, trash yeah. containers? Yep. yep. All the things that we discussed when, we okay. were, when I was putting right. that bid package together. Yep. Okay. Yep. All that's included. I thought we did, but I wanted to clarify. I want to say we added some things, too. Um, we added okay. the new shelter house. We added. Um, I think another location too. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was, but I think we added a few. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it turned out very well. It did. Very well. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you, sir. Yep. All right. Any other discussion? Any other topics? Well, I put when uh, Mr. Kicker called me when he was putting the agenda together. He asked for a if we need an executive. I didn't think we did, but I you know I didn't know if Mr. Bridge had anything or any other council members did. So I don't need it. I didn't need one, but I didn't know if there was anything else I was missing. I would like one. Okay. Yeah. I, and that's why you were out of town, so yeah. I figured it would be safe. Sorry we could skip it if we didn't need it. So. Absolutely. So we will go into executive session to just consider the employment of a public employee, and then we will return to regular session. For those of you that are newer, we'll go into executive session. Everybody has to clear out. And then once we're done, you are welcome to come back in if you'd like. I don't foresee any business being done afterwards, though. Mr. Mayor, please go to the Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Lindsay. Do you have an Councilman Rodwell? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. yes. Except at 7 0. All right, we'll take a quick five second break. Mr. Mayor, move to return to regular session? Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. <laughs> Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodwell? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Graham? Yes. Mr. Mayor, move to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Who adjourns? All right. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman yes. Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodwell? Yes. Mayor Lowry? No. What? Yep. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. And Councilman Bob. We're going home. All right. We can stay here. Yeah. Adjourn.